So now that we've had a good look at the hardware and really have a good idea of how the hardware operates and how it responds to each individual instruction that is presented to it, and we've had a look at all of the instructions that are available and we've started to write some code in MIPS, we're going to go back to the hardware and sort of solidify a few of the little remaining magic boxes that are still there. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to look at how the program counter gets updated. Uh, in the uh, existing hardware, this is a magic box that says next address, and you can see that it receives, and there's a couple different versions of the hardware, but basically it receives um, information from the contents of RS and RT, it receives the immediate value from the instruction, which can either contain the immediate value for an I format branch or the jump target address for a J format jump. It receives the program counter, and then it's going to produce a new program counter depending on the kind of instruction that's being executed. And it also produces uh, the next value of the program counter for when you're doing a uh, jump and link. Remember, for jump and link, we have to have two sort of inherent operands that will tell the register file to store the current value of the program counter, PC plus 4, in the register file at the address indicated by 31, which if we remember our uh, register file, 31 is our return address. So we use 31 and PC plus 4, and that stores the current value of the program counter, or I guess the, <laughs> the address of the next instruction after the jump, and then also allows us to put a new value into the program counter. So let's look at what's in this box and try to figure out how to actually build out the hardware that's going to allow us to accomplish jumps and branches and next address. So we have three or four different things we have to be able to do. Uh, we have to be able to branch, which is going to compare the current values of RS and RT, and then based on that comparison, either add the immediate value to the program counter or not add the immediate value to the program counter. I should say in some implementations of this, uh, we're going to use the ALU to do that comparison, but for simplicity of development, we're actually going to make a new little comparator inside the next address logic that'll do that comparison for us. So that's branches, our conditional. Jumps are unconditional, so we're just going to create the pseudo direct address uh, that you can have a look at um, how that's actually done based on the jump instructions, but we have to have hardware to do that. Uh, the JR instruction allows us to jump to the register that has, or to the address that's stored in register RS. And then syscall is the fourth way to change the value of the program counter, and that uh, puts the uh, a special address into the program counter, the address of an operating system response routine. We don't know what that address is, but we need a register that holds that address, uh, and that's, <clears throat> or, or even hardware, uh, and that's going to put a new address into the program counter. So those four different ways to put a new address into the program counter. And in all of these cases, if we're not branching, uh, we're going to add four to the program counter first. Well, whether or not we're branching, we always add four to the program counter so that the next instruction is PC plus four, and it might be PC plus four plus sign extended shifted immediate, or it might be PC plus four adjusted for a jump target address, as we'll see as we go through the hardware for each of these individual versions. So again, this is the magic box that we have right now, and we want to build out the hardware. Now, I'm not going to walk through the whole process. I'm just going to give you the hardware, but I want to walk through how each individual unit works for each kind of instruction that we might address. So there's two register sources, the current value of the program counter, and we're going to and the immediate or jump target address field. And then we're going to produce a next value of the program counter and also PC plus four to store in JR, or sorry, to store when we're doing a jump and link. So this is the hardware, and I'm just going to give it to you. It does look a little bit intimidating, uh, but we'll walk through the whole thing piece by piece and we'll make sure that it all makes sense. There's a couple of different versions of this hardware available. I'm just going to slip out of the frame for a second so you can see the whole thing. There's a few different versions of this hardware available. Uh, but for now, we'll walk through this one. And again, I remember I said there are four options for what the next value of the program counter are going to be. These four options are, are, are chosen using the multiplexer that's right here. This is addressed by the control point we're going to call PC source. What is the source of the next program counter? And there are four options. Either it's going to be the syscall address, which again, we don't really know much about it. It's still magic. The operating system will provide a syscall address and we'll just put that into the program counter and go. Or we can have a jump address, which is created like this, the first four bits of the program counter, and then the 26 bits of the jump target address, 
and then the two bits of zero zero because all addresses are word aligned. Um, if this is unclear to you, go and look at your uh, details on jump instructions and the J format instructions. But this is how you create the new address when you're doing a uh, pseudo direct jump. Uh, and that needs information from the current value of the program counter and the jump target address, which is in the, the <laughs> all that's left of the instruction for a jump instruction after you get rid of the opcode. So those bits of information are put together to create the jump target address, which we're going to use 0, 1 in this multiplexer for that. Third version, we're going to do the simple ones first. Um, the third thing you can do is you can jump to a register. That's going to be 1, 0, and we can see we're just going to pull RS straight down and use that as an option for the next program counter if you're telling the machine to jump register, right? Because then you just put the value of the register in and you're there. The rest of this is a little bit more complicated, but this is the branch instructions. So let's look at the branch instructions hardware by hardware and see how this works. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add four to the program counter. This sort of happens every time, all the time, because the next address most of the time is just PC plus four. Um, and that's also the address that you store when you're doing a jump and link. So we're going to add four to the program counter, simple little adder. It looks like a big complicated adder, but we're just adding four to the program counter. And then that value is presented as is for jump and link, but is also used as, an, as um, the rest of the addition for the rest of this hardware when we're doing branches. Now, you might be concerned that this PC plus four is going to be modified somehow for, for instructions that aren't branches, because we still have to always generate the program counter. But most of the time, this addition is going to be adding zero. Uh, and we'll see how that works in a second. So the program counter plus four, and then we're going to add an immediate value that's sign extended and also shifted. I don't know that shifted in here is not, um, but it's sign extended and shifted. And then we are going to compare our S and RT. And based on the kind of branch we're doing, we're going to decide whether that, that immediate value is added or not. So this immediate value is added if the jump is successful and is not added in two cases, either if the jump is unsuccessful or if we're not even doing jump, if, or these are branches. If the branch is successful, then we add this value. If the branch is not successful, then we don't add that value. And if we're not doing a branch, then we don't add that value. This is the case for most instructions. Any other kind of instruction, the branch type is going to be such that the next address is just the program counter plus four. PC plus four comes here, and then for most instructions, the branch true is going to be zero. This AND gate takes that zero and blocks out the immediate value, and then we add zero, and then that value comes down to here, and our PC source for most cases is going to be zero, zero for just PC plus four. In the cases then when we do the branch, we're going to bring RS and RT in here and compare them. And there's a bunch of different ways we can compare. We can subtract and check flags. We can do a comparison for equality. Um, most of the time, we're just comparing for equality. And then we'll use some other instruction to compare, to set some register when we're doing less than or greater than uh, comparison. This is the SLT uh, instruction. But then we're going to branch on equality or not equality. So this is a strict equal or not equal comparison. And then, um, based on what kind of uh, comparison we're doing, which we'll bring in as a control point here. Then uh, whether or not the branch is successful comes here. The AND gate will block or not block the sign extended immediate shifted value of the, uh, the branch offset. And then that result, either PC plus four or PC plus four plus the uh, branch offset will be provided to the zero zero input of the multiplexer. And that'll be our next instruction. So four different ways to do a branch, and each of those different ways is put together in this hardware. That is this hardware here. But now we have to look at what new control points we've added so that we can make sure that we have access to and understand the requirements of each of those control points. So we have two different control points that we've added. We've added a control point called BR type, branch type, which in this hardware is abbreviated as BR. And that's going to have two bits. It's going to tell us what kind of branch we're doing. Um, I think it says two bits. Let's just double check. Yeah, BR is going to have two bits. Uh, zero means we're not branching. Uh, one means we're branching if equal. Two means we're branching if not equal. And then three is unused. Uh, and I'll go through all of this stuff in a second. Then we're also going to have a um, PC source, which is going to be a two bits that's going to tell us whether we're using 
zero, 00 for a branch type, uh, zero, 01 for a jump, 10 for a jump register, and 11 for a syscall. Okay. So those are the two new um, control points. And this is uh, BR and PS. BR for the branch type and PS for the PC source. And that's it. That's all the hardware we're going to use. Uh, the next step in the next video is going to be how to actually figure out what the control points are for any kind of instruction and how to build the control hardware uh, that will implement those control points.